uh, we, but we say that uh, we hope things will improve in this year. I also say that I'm not yet pronouncing myself about certain things that are being said around. I've also actually requested other politicians to desist from politicizing the church service. That when we go to the church, we go to pray. When we want to talk about politics, we get out of the church and then talk politics. We should not be given government programs, what the government is doing in the church. That is politics. Let us go and pray with Christians and talk about the politics outside the church. So I will be talking, as I mentioned, to Kenya after St. John's has spoken. I said that there's a gospel according to St. Matthew, a gospel according to St. Mark, a gospel according to St. Luke, and finally, gospel according to St. John. St. John will speak about bombers. Then I will speak thereafter. No, Asan Joho is out of the country. He's out of the country, but he's going to come back. I talk to him all the time. Even this week, I've talked to him. He will be coming, and when he comes, he's going to join the party and uh, make his contribution. Yeah, the ODM is uh, very much united and strong. The same thing with Azimio. There is nothing like a power struggle within Azimio. We work together very closely with Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, the Honorable Huru Kinyata, Honorable Martha Karua. We all the times working together. There's nothing like a power struggle within Azimio. Uh, everything will be done very smoothly. We are going to strengthen Azimio as we also strengthen the constituent parties of the coalition to make it strong. So we are together. But the former president is resigning from Azimio. I'm not sure. I, I don't know where you're getting that information from. I was with him just yesterday. Even I talked to him this morning. He has not given me any impression that he's going to resign from Azimio. That is sheer media propaganda. Uhuru is very much a member and part and parcel of Azimio leadership. I really don't want to engage Mr. Ruto in any kind of argument. Mr. Ruto knows that everything he's proposing is there in the Building Bridges Initiative document. If you want us to talk, let us start from there. But we must engage the people of Kenya in any major constitutional amendment that you want to bring. You cannot bring ministers into parliament by changing standing orders. Nobody will allow you to do that, because that's a very fundamental departure from the structure of government that we have today. It has to be debated extensively by the people of Kenya. If you want to uh, have a position of prime minister, it is in the uh, uh, Building Bridges Initiative. Where do you call him uh, uh, chief prime uh, or, or prime cabinet secretary? Call him a prime minister and give him a proper portfolio. Actually, I am very sorry for Honorable uh, Salim Davadi that a person of his stature is being given no portfolio and just given a title uh, to do. Uh, it is actually an embarrassment. So what is it we want to engage, let us engage. But first, let us deal with what happened at Bomas of Kenya. Let us deal with what happened at Bomas of Kenya. Because that is what is going to solve the problem of this country. When Kenyans know exactly who won or who lost the elections. A coup is done against an existing government. The military could not have done a coup against itself. That actually is a fallacy. How would the government have done a coup against itself? If, but if they wanted to do a coup, who would have prevented them from doing a coup? Honorable Huru Kenyatta said that he wanted free and fair elections and that the government will not interfere in any way or to What has what's happened is what all Kenyans know. The coup which was done by civilian coup by one called Mr. Chewafula Shebukati, four against three. The four commissioners said they don't agree with what Shebukati announced. 
And Shibukati says he's the one who had the, the, the figures. So you ask yourself, who is lying to Kenyans? Who is telling the truth? That is what I'm talking about. That is what Kenyans must know, because there will be no point in Kenya going again in 2027 to vote if at the end of the day you end up in such a, a, a charade and chaotic situation like we saw at the bombers of Kenya. So if they're talking about audit, yes, let us audit. Begin first by auditing Mr. Chebukati. Where was he? For the last eight years when he disappeared. And where did he get the results that he announced? That is the question that must be asked. If you can answer those questions, Kenyans will be happy. Kenyans will be happy. That's what we've been talking about, and we will not stop talking about this. And what I've said, I don't want to speak much until St. John has spoken.